Good morning, one and all, and welcome to this morning's video. So I have just the one pair on watch today, and that is Euro Yen. Just to say that the reason that I haven't made a video for a little while is because nothing, uh, no entries amongst the pairs that I was looking at last week actually provided an entry with the exception of Euro Pound. I actually took a trade on that last week. Uh, and it was actually a loss. I'm going to break that down for you in a minute. There was actually a re-entry, which I missed. It's very, very, very rare that I actually miss a trade, but I did actually miss a re-entry on this. Not because of, not because I was licking my wounds after the other loss. It was just, I literally just didn't see it. And I logged it as a missed trade. It happens to the best of us. So I shall break down the trade that I placed on Euro Pound plus the missed trade, which happened a day or two later. And then I'll <clears throat> excuse me, and then I will talk about what I will be looking for from Euro Yen. So Euro Pound, I was looking at Euro Pound because on the higher time frames, on the daily chart, <clears throat> excuse me, on the daily chart, I was looking at this because we had we had this. <clears throat> do excuse me, I don't know why my voice always does this when I make a video, but on the daily chart we had this one two, three, this kind of treble bottom, if you like. And I was looking to play this range from here all the way up to here to complete this kind of structure here, okay? So I was, I was looking for this. Let's try that again. So just to complete something like that, we had the one, two, three middle section. And then that would imply, especially if we've got a treble bottom there, if we would see an impulsive run to the upside to complete this one, two, three, and that this was the near miss that I often talk about to this area here where volume was created. Okay. Volume's either triggered or it's created. Volume was built there or created, and we had a near miss to it. So when I see this one, two, three middle section within a potential one, two, three, that gave me a clue that we would see an impulsive move up to that area. And that's exactly what happened. Okay. Just one of the difficult things it took it probably only took me about a month to actually pick the or predict the direction of the market with a fair degree of accuracy but it takes a lot longer to actually time the entries get involved in winning trades on a consistent basis because timing the entry and the ex execution and actually learning how to manage your risk which is what we are first and foremost ri risk managers is actually the skill okay picking the direction is not that difficult I don't, in my experience, anyway, we do have a series of near misses to the downside. So that was a slight negative. We had near misses down to there, but I was just seeing this as a one, two, three to complete that move to potentially then come down and take out all these near misses. And then we would have that break the low that made contextual contextual sense. Okay. So we had the daily rejection here with this. Um, one of the things I'm mindful of, just to touch on it, is we kind of wicked to this area and not necessarily through it. Okay, you could argue we did pierce slightly through it, but predominantly this wick wicked to the area and not through it. Okay, so that always gives uh, price the possibility when that happens, this wick will uh, often, although not always, get filled. Okay, which it did there. It got filled twice, actually. And or three times actually, and I shall touch on that when the when I talk about the re-entry, and then we see the move to the upside. Okay, so this was, but the criteria was met. Okay, we had the one, two, three. We had pierced slightly below, but we'd predominantly wick to it, which often implies that we're going to wick, uh, come back down to fill the wick and wick through it, which you can see we did here, and then the momentum came into the upside. But uh, you know, if we look for perfection, my strike rate. My trade frequency is low as it is. So if I just waited for perfection all the time, then I'd never place a trade. So we had the one, two, three. We had the daily rejection there, that green candle. So now I'm on the four hour looking for uh, to see how the land lies. We also had what I liked on the four hour is we had this one, two, three, where the waves were of a similar length, implying that we'd likely complete. This move was complete. And as I often say, when it completes at an area of value, that's a good indication that we we're going to see the move to the upside. So we see, um, oops, wait a minute. There we go. So we had the four hour momentum. So 
Although we'd only wicked to it on the daily chart, we had closed in this area by way of full-bodied price action. I liked that. So we had a solid four-hour push-up. Okay, now I'm on the one hour. I can see the consolidation there. We then have this one hour consolidation here. So six to eight corrective one hour candles. Okay, let's get that off the chart. Uh, so what I did here, so now I'm looking at this correction here. We came back down and had a bit of an expanding. So we had these higher highs there. I actually cut through these wicks and I shall explain why, okay? If you look at when that occurred, that was 10 p.m. UK time, which is swap hours. OK, this one actually fell into uh, 11, uh, 11 p.m. Uh, but what I did is here. So now we've got the one hour co correction. I was just looking at this on the 15 minute to analyze the structure. OK, so let's look at this. So what I did is I cut through these wicks. OK, you've got to remember that swap hours is not liquidity when you see this stuff it's a lack of liquidity okay so it's not always indicative of the sentiment of the market so if we look at this first candle there that happened at 22:30 okay this one happened at 22:45 to 11 o'clock at night swap hours again this candle was in the first 15 minutes of the asian session implying that that's often when the spread is just calming down so i didn't see this as indicative of this structure okay this those wicks down there didn't look like they were part of this okay especially when they're to excuse my dog if you can hear that rufus my dog is making a noise i don't know what he's doing so i was just seeing this as a lack of liquidity caused by swap hours okay so i cut through those wicks and so we have this structure here with that in mind we have this structure here so what i did is I went, price broke below, okay, broke below this structure. It then moved above. When this candle closed here, I set an entry. Or actually, I placed a market order, but I waited for price to uh, get a couple of pips above the close of this candle. What that often prevents you being tagged in and tagged out, but in this instance, it didn't. So now I'm managing it on the one hour chart. Okay, what's that? There we go, right. Uh, so we got there. And I was literally just whipped in and then it just came down. Euro pound has a, a tendency to create a double bottom, do that and then go. But usually you would see more of, it doesn't usually look like this. You would usually have a bit more of a scoop like that before we go. Okay. Now, so that was a loss. Okay. So I was just a quick, a quick in and out for a loss. Very happy with that trade. Wouldn't do anything differently where I missed a position. So I'm going to put that uh, away now. Where I missed a position is once we came down here and we started to move up like this, I was actually seeing this as a bear flag. Okay, so I was seeing this as an impulse down, follow, followed by a bear flag to push lower. Okay, but where I made a mistake, so I wasn't even seeing this as a reversal structure. Um, if I'd actually, let's just flip the, let's just flip the chart. If I'd had my chart, that way up, I would have seen this as a reverse structure. I know many of us see short slightly differently um, to we do longs. Okay. So then we would have had this. Um, let me just flip that back a minute. So the reason that there was a bit of a mistake on my part, because if this was a bear flag to go lower, you wouldn't usually see, it wouldn't usually look if, so if this is the move up, okay, it wouldn't usually look like, we wouldn't usually have an impulsive middle section down followed by a corrective move up. Okay. The move would look more like predominantly it would have an impulsive move up a more corrective move down and then a more impulsive move up. Okay. Then we would see the move to the downside. This was actually obviously upside down. Okay. So with impulse, uh, we had the, we kind of impulse down impulsive middle section followed by corrective move up. And that kind of means that it's more likely to be a reversal structure because if it's a reversal structure, I've just flipped my chart. We have that impulsive move up, corrective move down, impulsive. The impulsive last leg is often people getting out of their positions, okay, when it lines up with an area like this. And then we would see that, okay. So where the entry was, I'll just flip it back, whoops, flip it back again. So we had that, remember me saying, so we had that daily close, 
Okay, I said price will normally you know break below most of the time these areas of value on the higher time frames before the bigger moves to the upside occur. We did that, so we had this. We we washed. This is a wash out of orders. This this candle here, this wick here. Okay, so then we had the four hour reversal structure. We can see that there. Okay, nice and clearly the middle section. When you get a clean structure on euro pound, which is not a clean pair by nature, that's often a good indication that we're ready to go. So we had the wash out there. We even had the near miss. You can see we near missed to that low. That's a good clue. We have the corrective move up. This is people getting trapped into the buys too early. They get washed out. Every All the orders that were below there get washed out. And then we have that impulse up. So now we can see the consolidation on the one hour chart. Okay. We have the red consolidation candle there. So where I would have entered look how clean this flag is this is usually as i said the big players stacking their moves uh, stacking their orders for a move to the upside and once again you can see the order of things here we have the impulsive move down even within this tight flag corrective move up an impulsive move down that's typically how these flags are structured if they're going to move to the upside okay you can see it more clearly on the on the 5 minute chart if i just you know filter this so impulsive move impulsive move down corrective move up impulsive move out where i would have entered here so this was a a 15 minute as i said to you i'm going to be those of you that are not watching on uh trading view who are watching my videos on on sorry not watching them within our private uh trading community those of you who are watching on trading view and youtube i'm not here to you know basically falsify my trades and pretend that i they're all winners and all that you know, that's garbage. I don't do that. I said full transparency. If I take a loss, if I miss a trade, I'm going to give you all of that. Okay. So we have the 15 minute consolidation here. I can see the 15 minute. This is a 15 minute structure. We have six to eight corrective uh, 15 minute candles as a minimum. What I would have done here is when this candle closed at this, this low here within this structure, I would have dropped down to the five minute chart. That gives me permission to drop down to the five minute chart and look for entries and what i would have done here is i wouldn't have got long after this one i would have waited for this candle to close and then i would have set my entry as such i don't know why that's moved but so i would have got in a couple of pips above the close of this candle which would have been here okay and then i would have been managing it on the one hour chart Okay, so that's the rules. So I would have been managing this on the one hour chart. You got to remember that although this looks after this candle, that looks quite far away. It's still only like 10 pips in terms of the um, overall move. So what we would, when we closed here, especially as we're now at this high, which was a sharp move, I would have moved my stop loss to break even. But what I would have done is I always add on a few pips to account for slippage and so forth. Okay. And then when we consolidated here, I wouldn't, I would have kept my stop loss um, at break even because this is still only about a 20 pip range. But when we, to give price a bit of room, but when we moved up here, so after this green candle, which is why the stop loss is uh, positioned there, after this green candle uh, moved up, uh, I would have, and we've got some kind of push away from this correction, I would have moved my stop loss to about 10 pips uh, below this low now, okay? And then obviously when price came back down, I would have been tagged out here for 1.56%. Assuming I was actually at my computer, you know, be able to actually do all of this, but this this is how I would have ideally managed it. And then I would, would have been taken out for 1.56. Of course, the trade then played out and we hit the target. We hit 90%. How I would have managed this is I would have measured from range to range, Okay. And I would have set a mechanical management. Um, I would have set a take profit up here. Okay. And you can see that we did stall at that 90% mark. And then that would have been, that would have been about 7%. Okay. So I would have been out of that trade for about 7%. But you might be thinking, well, why didn't you just hold it? That's all well and good. But, you know, when you typically speaking, when you start seeing, deeper pullbacks like this, this can turn into all kinds of things. You know, we, we could have sat through. I'm not really interested in sitting 
through trades like that, which take several days to play out. And by the time, you know, if they form that large, then there's a chance that they could be a, a middle se- section to come back down like that. Okay. So, so it's all about taking small, uh, you know, small profits along the way rather than trying to catch these home runs. But that's Euro pound. You can see the direction played out exactly as forecasted. It just didn't play out quite in the manner that I was anticipating. But that is Euro pound. One loss, one missed trade, which would have offset the loss. But it is what it is. That's been documented. So Euro pound, I've, uh, Euro yen. I'm gonna I've um, talked for a bit too long on on the, on Euro pound, but. So euro yen. Why am I looking at euro yen? You can see that uh, it's very, very likely that we will gravitate to this high at some point because look how sharp this was, and look how aggressive we sold off from there last time around. That is where volume was triggered. Okay, volume was triggered there. It's very likely if we're seeing a move like that that we will find our way back up to there. Okay, so I'm just mindful of that. I didn't intend to start on the weekly. I said I wasn't going to do that, but it's relevant in this instance. Okay, but that doesn't mean that we can't capitalize potentially especially as you can see a near miss to this high we could potentially see a move down to here before we come back up to take out that high okay so we we broke up of this high okay where there was a sharp sell-off but price did not find enough liquidity it it wicked above but it didn't find enough liquidity to send it down to this low which this low near miss to it's consolidated sideways so that gives me a clue that this isn't really relevant anymore okay this was not an area of value that dictated the direction of the market. If we just drill down, you can see what do we have here. So the clue was that we had this one, two, three leading up to this area of value. We started to commit, okay? We started to see that commitment, but then we started to move down quite correctively, giving me the, the, the clue that there was not enough liquidity here to send price to the downside and that we were forming something a bit more complex. So then we have... This gives me a clue that this is the area of value because we near miss to it. Okay, we sell off, and what often happens is we sell off, but we don't commit. You know, we don't start breaking the lows because there's still liquidity up there that needs to be taken out, and liquidity being placed in the area that area. Okay, before the bigger moves to the downside can occur, you can see price gravitate, and this looks like a, a grab of liquidity, which will likely cause price to tap into that area of value, and. You can see here, we also have a near miss to this low where the volume was triggered. Okay, we have volume was triggered here and there was enough of an exchange of liquidity to cause price to smash through that previous high. And it also happens to be the retest of the back end of this as well. So it's an area of significance, okay, which is probably why we near missed to the area. FOMO channel, okay. I like the fact that we have within... Within this structure, we have higher highs. We have this expanding pattern and and lower lows. You can see lower lows and higher highs being made. This is also a good clue that we may tap above and push to the downside. So what I'm going to be looking for, because I am fast running out of time, time, we're moving up quite correctively, is I'm going to be looking for the following. I'm going to be, look, I'm going to be looking for price to tap into this area of value, okay, and then push that down below this area of interest, and then on the one hour chart. And then I would look for either a five minute continuation. So six to eight corrective five minute ca candles or the 15 minute consolidation. And then I would look to get short on the break or if, and if it was a 15 minute consolidation, I would do what I would have done on Euro pound with that missed trade. I would look for the risk entry within the flag. And then I would look to get short. And what I would do is I would use the mechanical management tool, which I would have used on the Euro pound re-entry. And I would measure from there to there, and what do you know, that sharp move there, that sharp low, that sharp move down, sharp move up happens to be exactly 90% or as near damn it. So I would set a, um, a take profit at that low and I would trail my stop loss accordingly. And then I would have something in the region just down to this first low, something in the region of 8% to work with. And then the target would be there, which is why that path tool was pointed to that low. Okay. Whoops. So, and you would have something in the region of 11.5% to work with. So I have an alert set just below the area of value. If it doesn't trigger, no trade for me. I hope you've enjoyed this, folks. As I said, full transparency, win, lose, or break even. The trades will be brought to you by way of recaps as soon as I make a video. 
and I will see you again in the next video, which will likely be tomorrow, providing I have a pair or pairs and watch. Thanks for watching.